It took me forever to uh, do this final video. I showed a paint job, uh, mostly because of laziness. <laughs> I really have no good excuse. This was done last winter, a year ago it was done. So anyway, this is the finished product. Um, I did not do a wet sand on it. That was supposed to be the final thing I was going to do, was do a wet sand after the paint cured. Uh, but I decided to let it stay the way it is. As you notice, it has sort of a texture to it because it has all the uh, raised paint. And I kind of like that because, well, it's going to get scratched up anyway. So why invest the time in wet sanding and screwing it up yourself when you're wet sanding for the first time? So we're going to leave it like that. After the paint job was over, I ordered myself a tire carrier. Because I got a 33 by 12 and a half inch tire and I did have it in the back of the uh, Jeep. Took the back seat out and put the tire in. But, you know, I was just afraid that if I got an accident, that tire is going to fly up and kill me. So, I wanted to put it where it belonged. So, you, you had to upgrade the tire carrier, obviously, because the uh, stock tire carrier is not designed to carry this type of weight right here. Uh, what I like about this tire carrier, I believe it's a best top tire carrier, I might be wrong about that, is that it's integrated into the tailgate. As you can see, all the hinges are mounted to the tailgate and then to a reinforcement point that is uh, actually uh, grabs around the roll bar inside the vehicle. And uh, it's very sturdy. The tailgate doesn't shake at all. Matter of fact, if I move the tailgate, the entire Jeep starts shaking. If I take the tire carrier, you can't jiggle the tire carrier without the entire Jeep shaking. It's solid. It's, it's bulletproof. The thing is awesome. Okay, from left to right, these are the products that I use to get the paint job done. I got my Max Solve for uh, cleaning the, uh, the body before, uh, between sandings and uh, before I spray any sort of uh, primer or put any paint on, I've been using the Maxsolve. High number five by Upal, it's a high build primer. I uh, use that and I also use that in conjunction with Upal's acid number eight self etching primer. Whenever I got down to bare metal when I was sanding, I sprayed some of that acid number eight on after uh, after I got done doing the uh, primer stage, I had to paint it. Unfortunately, I did not have the money to do it the right way. Okay, so I got some Limco paint mixed up at the uh, auto paint store. And uh, the guy told me that plan B is this Preville Hobby Sprayer. You hear that? I don't know if you can or not. <laughs> but anyway, it's got a little bit of compressed air left in it, so I used this already. Um, what it comes with when you buy the box, it comes with one of these and then a one pint jar that where you put your paint. Screw this sucker on, make sure your paint got mixed up already correctly. And uh, you know, you just go ahead and spray and it has, I think it was like a, uh, uh, a spray radius about like that. Not, it's not too much. It's like what, like four, maybe five inches if you're lucky, all right? So I did three coats over the entire Jeep, and uh, it was a little bit of a pain in the neck. But I mean, it worked. The, 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 the thing that really uh, got under my skin was this had a tendency to clog up, okay? Didn't happen all the time, but it always happened at the most inopportune times. For example, when I was doing the, uh, the half doors for the soft top, which I have down in the basement right now, I'm not going to bother bringing them up. But when I did the half doors, I was, at that point, I was like, all right, I'm an expert at this Preble sprayer thing. <laughs> I know what I'm doing now. And I was spraying the door, spraying the door, and it was looking good. And then all of a sudden, it splattered. It got, it got clogged up, and then it just splattered. So I wound up having to, you know, get the uh, sander out and correct that. So it did work. It's not the best thing in the world. You know, it does give you a raised texture unless you wet sand it down, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> uh, so that is the answer to the question. I'm sorry it took so long to post this video, but uh, there it is. Got my green Jeep. Thank you, Mr. Preble. <laughs> when you're doing the door jams, 
you want to make the uh, the paint thicker because you're constantly opening and closing the door. It's going to get the most uh, wear and tear, if you will. So you want a thicker coat of paint in the door jam area. So just use a brush. Don't bother with the sprayer. Uh, what are you, I don't know, whatever. You do whatever you want to do. I'm just letting you know what I did. <laughs> I just used a brush like I was Huckleberry Finn and painting a fence with Tom Sawyer. And done. All right, so, so far it's been holding up pretty good. Uh, this, this area, you know, whatever. The lock mechanism, you can see the old red paint there from when the doors used to be red. Who cares? Not me. So whatever, it is what it is, and I'm fine with it. The next, one of the other projects I did was uh, finally got the uh, rear fender flares on. Uh, these were for oversized tires. I believe it was Rugged Ridge ma manufactured these. In order to install these Rugged Ridge fender flares the correct way, you're supposed to uh, trim your body uh, right in the wheel well area. Um, I did not have courage to do that. I was afraid <laughs> that I was just going to completely just gnarl up the body and probably not even, you know, uh, get, get them installed correctly anyway. So I just said, you know what, just for now, I'm going to, I'm going to tack the, tack this over top and lead, you know, split the difference, if you will, on the left and right and the top, make it fit, make it work. And I did, and I got it mounted on and, uh, but it has the existing body still there. I never trimmed it. So you can see the green, you might be able to see the green right here of the uh, body. And that's what should have been cut off but I'm not doing that, so. But, uh, so that's that. That was the hardest thing to get on, and, but it's done now, it's done. When it warms up, I'm gonna have to take care of this problem right here, a little bit of rust, uh, no big deal. So that's uh, one of the last things I have to do uh, for the exterior of the Jeep. Uh, everything else is gonna be uh, rust proofing. <laughs> 